Good morning, my friends. It is Monday, August 5th, and I'm here with you at the Rising of the Sun. I have flown up to Connecticut for a brief two-night family reunion. This is the Salem Valley. My great-grandfather was the first white man in Machu Picchu. They say he discovered it, but the natives were already there. But he purchased a lot of land in Connecticut, and my family, many descendants now, have given it all to the Nature Conservancy. There are a couple of farms still working on it, but most of that valley is called the Salem Valley Corporation, and it is donated land. It is so beautiful. I looked at this view all during my childhood in the summers. We are moving into the book of Judges this morning, back to the seventh and sixth century BC, where we encounter a young man named Gideon. Now the people of Israel at the time are being oppressed by the Midianites, and they think that God has abandoned them but God appears to Gideon and says to Gideon, I want you to sacrifice your father's second bull and tear down the altar of Baal and put up a pole to thank, give thanks to me. So Gideon does this. And then Gideon is still not sure that God is with him. So he puts a fleece, some wool of a sheep on the ground and says, Lord, please put dew on the fleece, but not on the ground around it, and I'll know you're listening to me. And God does that, and it says there's so much dew on the fleece that he could wring a bowl, wring it out and fill a bowl of water. And then he says, one more test, God, just please, one more, I'm just a little nervous. Could you now do the opposite? So put the dew all around the fleece, but not on it, let the fleece be dry. And the next day, God does just that. So Gideon knows that God is with him. Gideon is going to be a great judge. All these signs that they needed to believe in God and the sacrificing of animals. I used to think it was so brutal that they would sacrifice an animal, but they were mostly vegetarians. They rarely ate meat. And when they did, they would make a big sacrifice to God and an altar, and then they would carefully distribute every single piece of this this animal, burning some of it for God, but giving pieces of meat, uh, some of them cooked, some uncooked to people, and distributing the wealth. It was a very reverential way of being carnivorous. If you're going to eat meat, how much more wonderful to thank God for it and to slaughter it yourself than to not even know where it came from and find it wrapped in packed packages of plastic like we do. So Gideon sacrificed a whole bull. He didn't tell his dad, by the way, it was one of two bulls, so that was a big deal. But he did it as an act of thanksgiving. What if we went back to remembering to really give thanks for our food, reminding ourselves of our roots back in the book of Judges? We don't have to sacrifice a beast, but perhaps that we could at least give thanks for it. Let us pray. Almighty God, we are so grateful for the food that we eat, for the beauty that we see, for the gift of this earth. I will pause and let you give thanks for anything you're grateful for this morning. We ask you, Lord, to bless the sick and the suffering and those who mourn and grieve, those who are addicted or mentally ill or struggling in any way. I will pause and let you speak aloud the people who need prayer in your life.
Lord, help us be like Gideon, following your will. Help us listen for the gentle nudge that is you. Help us to walk in your ways, learn your ways, to approach one another with love and compassion. Bring peace to this world, Lord, to all the peoples of the earth. All this we ask in the name of Jesus, your Son, who loved us and gave himself for us. Amen. God bless you. Have a great day.